Hello and welcome to another episode of 5 Minutes with Mike. This episode, we're going to talk about how, let's just say, demonically inspired musicians. This is 5 Minutes with Mike. Our news, our voice, and our opinion with your host, Michael Beckford. Now stop, listen, and pay attention for 5 Minutes with Mike. It's a travesty. This is a very important episode, guys. It's a travesty when you have a music industry that is glorifying demons, like really real demons, left and right. It's like 2023 was the year that musicians really made demons cool, air quotes. For those that don't know, there's nothing cool about demons unless you are a bona fide Satanist. Demon worship in music used to be something that was kind of, you know, to the far left of music. Like, it just kind of, you know, was in a corner of his own. Um, There was a lot of, you know, well-known rock bands that, you know, did, you know, Satan worship and things like that. And individuals like Marilyn Manson that, uh, you know, gave the devil their praise (coughs) Um, in their music. But... That was a thing that, like I said, was was in its own corner, not in a mainstream forefront, as many aspects of music is today. Five Minutes Mike is sponsored by Let's Get Published Course. Get your book published within the next 90 days or less. Download my course today on Let's Get Published Now dot com and type instant promo code WRITE 2024 for an instant two hundred forty nine dollars off my course. Link in the description below. Number one, Lil Nas X shocked the world when he was giving the devil the lap dance last year in his music video that went viral, of course. Had a lot of backlash and a whole lot of views and, of course, a whole lot of controversy. But Lil Nas X even took it a step further and decided to donate some of his blood, which in some part is sort of a ritual sacrifice, by the way. Um, and I'm not talking about he he didn't donate it to the big red truck. No, he donated some of his blood and put it inside of a shoe, uh, which is a non-approved Nike shoe, and sold those shoes for the good old price of $666. I'm sure we all know that reference point. But of course, Nike wanted no parts of what Lil Nas X had going on at the time, so they stopped him with a cease and desist order very quickly, might I add. Number two. While Lil Nas X was giving the devil a proverbial lap dance, other artists like Sam Smith pretty much dressed as a devil in one of the major award shows. Of us, of course, everyone called out the openly gay Smith and Christians definitely weren't having it. And while both Sam Smith and Lil Nas X are openly gay and back that thing up to the devil, artists such as Lil Uzi Vert, who's, you know, one that addresses claims to be, you know, allegedly metrosexual, also has allegedly enjoyed some fictional caviar with the likes of darkness. His music oozes and rocks you to sleep, and not the kind that takes you to bed, but the kind that paralyzes your spirit if you're not careful. But he's not alone in this, of course. The artist known as Doja Cat is also practicing in the arts of sleepwalking and gives great mention to Satan himself, allegedly. Number three. And when the artist known as Playboy Cardi is not dressed like Batman or in a thong, in an interview with the mask over his face as a professed vampire, his music will often log you into the bitter world of Satanism and demonology, play it over fancy beats stripped down by fast rap lyrics. Oh yes, oh yes. These artists unfortunately are rooted and are stained in the pleasure of Satan himself. Now I'm not saying they sold their souls, but their souls might be sold. So here we have a generation of popular artists that are glor- glor- glorizing, glamorizing, sanctifying demons. And it's not just them. Future has a song talking about demons and the glorification they're on as well. I just want to know, as an 80s baby, at one point in time in, in hip hop and rap history, were demons considered a good thing? Just as quick as a biblical history lesson here, demons were not a good thing. They were falling angels that disobeyed God and decided to follow Satan. So when you hear someone talk about demons in a positive light, 
then they're the opposite of God, which is antichrist and anti-God. Now, let's take them to church. My daughter is eight years old, and I realized that I definitely have to watch out for what she hears. Because kids are like sponges. They absorb a thing. They say a thing, and they don't understand they're repeating a spell. This video can honestly go longer because I give I have ton, there's tons of artists and examples of artists through the years that have played with demonology. But it just seems within the past couple of years that was once kind of a nuanced thing that was more, you know, more of in a subliminal type of nature. Got to try to figure it out if they really were or not by different symbols. But this was once a nuanced thing has turned into kind of a, you know, a mainstream. Demons have gone mainstream in the music industry. And a sex tool volume. Two. Sex can be used as a powerful tool and even more powerful weapon. Welcome to the city of Atlanta, where the lights are bright, the scams are steady, and sex is the ultimate drug of choice. The Sex Tour, Volume 2, a novella by Michael D. Beckford, coming soon to ebook, paperback, and audio. Volume 1 of The Sex Tour is available now wherever books are sold. Two is a short story by Michael D. Beckford. It's coming soon on Amazon and wherever you read your books. Please like and hit that subscribe button. Five Minutes Mike is written, produced, and directed by Michael D. Beckford. All rights reserved. Copyright 2024 by Speak Pubs International and Michael Beckford Media Group, LLC Production. Thank you for listening and watching.